Dan Mari here, and today we're going to talk about how to build a data-driven company. I love this topic. This is a topic that I have talked about a thousand times, I think, in my career. Um, talking about how to use data to make your company more profitable, more efficient, how to free up your time so that you can be more focused on what you do best. All these things happen when you look at the data and the data gives you direction on what you should do. So I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on a blog post by a woman named Sarah Brown who posted on LinkedIn these tips on how to build a data-driven company. And at the beginning of her article, she talks about how creating a data culture is one of the keys to building a data-driven organization. Creating a data culture is a key to building data of an organization. The right technology, the data literacy of your staff, people of teams, and the disrupting the status quo are where you wanna start. Now data is designed to give us information. And when we get information, we should make changes on that information. Now, maybe sometimes we do the exact same thing we did yesterday, but it's pretty rare. Data is something that should always tell us what we should do, and it should be a constant evolution. And to be very successful with data, your company has to have a data culture. And you have to be able to use technology to give you faster access to more data that allows you to make quick decisions. This is kind of what you want to do. And I had this opportunity to start my career off working for a company that had a very deep, very, very powerful data culture. And that was Wells Fargo Bank. Like all big banks, they are incredibly numbers driven. The data in, in the bank is more important than actual money in some ways, right? What you know about your customers, what you know about their buying patterns, what you know about their where they live and what their lives are like and what they need now and in the future allows you to really, really offer the solutions to them um, in a very timely fashion and a very tailored way that allows you to really get more of their business and to get more people like them into your business. This is what made Wells Fargo so successful. And I was Wells Fargo for 15 years and, and we were able to do a lot of big data projects um, where I was up the lead on trying to figure out how do we optimize this new product in this new geographic area to this new demographic? How do we figure out what's broken and how do we fix it? How do I identify things that are threats or risks to the organization? So data helped me do a lot of that kind of stuff. And I took that knowledge I learned from Wells Fargo and I spent the last 10 years helping companies do the same thing, doing training and consulting with companies about how to take the data and be able to use it to make better decisions. Because the bottom line, it's the nerds that succeed, that make more money. You look at the top companies in the world, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tesla, who are they owned by? Nerds, right? Guys that know how to use data and value the use of data in decision making. So based on my knowledge, I'm gonna share with you my interpretation of the things that Sarah talks about in her blog post. And number one is know what it means to be data driven. It's easy to say, but hard to really make true. Data-driven means that everything you do, you're thinking about the data before you do it. Now, it doesn't mean that you're a slave to data. You don't always only do what data tells you, but you always have data available to guide you in your decision making. Whatever it is in your business you're thinking about doing, you should ask yourself, is there data that I can use to help me make sure I'm making the right decision, can help me identify if this decision starts going the wrong way, how to correct it or how to change it, and then how to measure success, right? The number one most important data point in any business is how much money do you have in your bank account, right? Are you able to actually be profitable and keep going? Well, that's the data point number one, but every other data point you capture should be how to you optimize your ability to make money? How do you increase the chances of you being profitable? How do you identify and mitigate risks to making yourself less profitable? This is the kind of idea you wanna always find data for, right? So let's take, for example, let's say you have a consulting business, right? And you have a group of clients that you're working with. You should be able to, to have some kind of data that tells you if you work with clients that fit this demographic geographic profile, they're gonna be more profitable than the ones that don't. For example, if you're coaching and you're doing network marketing and you're coaching network marketers and most of your clients are women and most of them are in a demographic range where their age is between like 25 and 45 and most of them have a college degree, most of them have a, a full-time job and they're doing this network marketing as a side hustle, um, 
you want to figure out among that group which of the ones you want to get most of your value from right you want to spend again like 80 20 rule you've heard this before right 80 percent of your time on the clients that are going to make you most of the money um you want to get most of your opportunity coming from the people that you can not only have a, a chance to make money off of but have impact with right if it's not completely money driven it's also something that makes you feel good and gives you a sense of purpose and allows you to grow your business um, but you got to know about the data behind it you got to think about what data do i need to help me understand how do i identify the right clients to spend most of my time with that's an example of what it means to be data driven number two is embrace new technology this is a big challenge because a lot of us aren't nerds right i'm the kind of guy i'd love to go out and check out everything that's new i always have the newest iphone i'm always checking out the newest streaming service i'm always you know figuring out what was the new technologies that are coming out how do we start using things like artificial intelligence and virtual reality um, these are things that always intrigue me. I'm just kind of that, that kind of data guy. Um, but you need to be the same. And if you're not, you need to find someone in your business that can help you. So you need to really embrace not only how to capture data, how to analyze data, and how to feed data into your decision making through the use of technology. Artificial intelligence is a game changer for big companies like Wells Fargo and how they're applying um, the ability to go through massive amounts of data and analyze millions and millions of rows of data in nanoseconds to be able to figure out what are the clients that are their most profitable and how do they offer them something they don't currently have to make them even more profitable. This is done through not people anymore, but through artificial intelligence. And this thing is really, really important. So using things that allow you to access AI tools, um, understanding concepts like how data lives in an environment in your business, we call that a data lake, um, using tools that you can collaborate with people, using cloud storage, using data warehouses, Augmented analytics is basically where you take all this technology and analyze things in ways that you can't do on your own. Anybody can look at an Excel spreadsheet and sort it and try to figure out patterns, but machines can do it faster, quicker, smarter than we can. So they give us the analysis and then we use our human gut and our intelligence to tell us, does this make sense? Should I do this? Well, this is embracing new technology. This is something that you need to be able to do. And it's something that Sarah highlighted in her blog post. Number three is disrupt your culture, right? Your culture has to constantly be in a state of disruption. This is like not something people want to hear, but it has to happen. When you don't allow data to constantly disrupt your business practices for the better, you end up like, unfortunately, Wells Fargo did. I left Wells Fargo before they had all those scandals a few years back, but I saw it coming. When I was there, I was looking at data. Data analysis was telling me, hey, people were doing things that aren't quite right. I even reported it, right? I said, hey, look at this data. This guy's doing something. And of course, nothing ever got done about it because the bank was too focused on making money and wouldn't use the data to constantly disrupt their culture. They got comfortable doing what they did and it cost them. If you look at any company that fails, one of the biggest reasons they're going to fail is because they didn't look at and analyze the data they had to make better decisions. So being a change agent is something every analyst should do. And if you're working for a company, then your job is to constantly put information forward to help decision makers make better decisions. Now, if you're a solopreneur working in a small business, you have to do this yourself. And it's really hard to do because you're making decisions. You get locked into something you think is working and you don't look outside the box anymore. This is why hiring an analyst, even a part-time virtual assistant analyst can be a big help for you. So you want to incentivize invention um, and innovation. You want to make sure you confront the brutal, brutal facts. We live in a world of fake news and a lot of that fake news can be easily dispersed if you look at the data. Now, yeah, people will say, well, data can be manipulated. You can use data to tell any story. That's true. But at its core, if you peel away all the people stuff around it, data can't lie. Data is what it is, right? So when you have a data-driven culture that believes in the value of data to constantly drive innovation through an evolution of its use, that's what you want to be doing, whether the, the, the business you're working in now or clients you're working with. You want to make sure that you're valuing the data. These are really the important things, right? So be a change agent, incentivize innovation, confront brutal facts. Um, make sure you organize around collaboration. Use the data to collaborate. These are some of the great things that um, were talked about in an article by Sarah. And she talks about, you know, suggestions for companies looking to be more data driven. Her focus is probably more corporate, more medium and bigger sized companies. But you can apply the same lessons to a small business, right? Um, you should be the one looking for change in your business. And if you're too busy doing what you're doing, and even if it's working, 
you still want to have an outside pair of eyes to look at things, hire a VA to do some of the analytics for you. Hire a VA to do some of the reporting, some of the data analysis, some of the number crunching to give you better information to make decisions. Number four, she talked about how to make your organization's data fair, right? Findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Okay, that's really cool, especially in a big scale company. You want to make sure your data is findable, right? You can find all the data you need and you have quick access to it. A lot of companies that have stumbled and fallen behind the cutting edge when it comes to using their data is because their data is hard to find. It's stuck in certain departments. It's siloed. It's not accessible. There's a lot of you know regulations and, and uh, rules in place um, that stop people from getting data, that can be a big challenge. Also, if it's not interoperable, if you can't use it across multiple uses, if your data doesn't have a ability to be used by multiple people, it's going to be um, useless, basically. And then it has to be reusable, right? Things that can be used over and over again. The data models you build, the data structures you build, um, the queries you build, you want to constantly reuse them, but also upgrade them as you do it, right? You want to keep your data fresh. Um, so findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable are what Sarah talks about as keys in a data-driven culture. Um, number five is build data literacy, right? So this is really important, and this is a big challenge because a lot of people don't like math. A lot of people look at an Excel spreadsheet and they're, they just get nosebleed. Their, their brain blows up. Um, we are just not a culture that values math and science the way we need to in a business to understand how to use data. So it's a constant effort to be more data literate, to teach people how to use data. Now, companies in the cutting edge, they're expecting this. They're requiring all their management, all their key decision makers to be data literate, to understand how to use that data. This is why the tech titans have gotten so powerful and why they've gotten so big so quickly. I mean, Facebook has so much data. They know exactly what you want before you want it, and that pops up in your newsfeed. Amazon tells you what you want to shop for before you even think about shopping for it, and they're usually right. Netflix tells you what shows you're going to want to watch before you even know what you want to watch. They're able to be proactive and predictive in what you're going to do because they're so data literate from top down in the organization. So if you're not data literate, it can be a challenge, but there's a fix. Hire someone to be your BFF at work or it works for you that can manage to be the data guy, that can be that data person, that data girl, the one that goes out there and crunches the numbers. You've got to have somebody doing that, even if it's not yourself. So building data literacy is super important. The next thing that, that Sarah talks about is don't look at data as a separate part of the business. It's in every part of the business. When I look at data, it's everywhere. When I go anywhere, I always think about the data behind it. This is it's a nerd in me, right? But if I'm at Starbucks, I'm thinking about like, you know, Starbucks has a menu um, that's been selected by data, right? What sells stays. What doesn't sell gets taken off the board. Um, you look at how they manage their, their queue for people coming in. They know how many staff to hire to have at certain times based on data, right? How much inventory to have, how much of this coffee bean do they have to have in stock to serve customers is all a predictive model based on understanding data. Data is infused in every part of your business, even if you don't see it. So you wanna peel away the barriers keeping you from understanding how data is, is involved in everything you do. Reframe how employees view data. Isn't any business problem starts with a line of questioning focused on what kind of analysis or data is necessary to solve that problem. No matter how big your business is, no matter what you do, you're going to need data to understand what the problem is and what the possible solutions are. And if the solutions you pick are going to work, this all requires data. So um, that's all I have for today. Really, that's basically Sarah's stuff, right? I walked you through her keys to being a data-driven culture. Really cool stuff. So I do these trainings all the time. I also have a team of virtual assistants who can be analysts for you. We help companies build business dashboards. We help companies figure out what data they need to be able to do data storytelling. We can help you, you know, supercharge your management reporting. We also have a team of VAs that can do other things too. We also help people have YouTube ready videos. We can create really cool graphic designs. We can manage your social media. So whatever it is you're in your business you're doing, whether you are focused all about data or you have other things that you need data for because knowing how to be good on YouTube requires data analysis. Understanding which graphic designs work with your audience requires data analysis. Understanding how to be really effective with social media requires looking at analytics, right? So looking at the data. So if you want to be more consistent, have more clarity and build more certainty between you and your clients, we can help you do that. We help you focus on what you do best 
by hiring for all the rest. So go to sonicva.com and check us out, S-O-N-I-C-V-A.com. I uh, want to thank you for your time. That's my talk for today. And I encourage you to go out there and analyze some data. Thank you.